This is Jamie Boyum. I am here in Kilgore at Region 7, where they got something special going on for uh, a whole bunch of kids. And this guy is sort of heading the show. This is John Bramblett. Hi. And he is an artist, right? And uh, I guess you're going to kind of teach the kids uh, how it is uh, that they can uh, paint. Even even though they maybe have uh, disabilities with their eyes. Yeah, yeah. I, I lost my eyesight about 20 years ago. And um, art had always been a huge part of my life. I think I could draw before I could walk. But I grew up with a lot of health problems. Had kidney problems. Had neurological problems. Had epilepsy. And then ended up losing my eyesight when I was in college. And I thought I'd lost art forever. Like, I thought it was just gone. Like, way, you know, so many other things seemed like they were gone. But I was so fortunate, though, because I had pe people in my life that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And they, you know, they, they helped me stay in school. They helped me, you know, get, get my degree, but start learning everything I needed to learn. And one of the big things was how to use a white cane. And like, I use a guide dog, like my guide dog Eagle now, but it's the same ideas where you can travel independently. You can travel around your house. You can get around a city and get around the entire country. And I thought, well, my goodness, if I could travel around a city, surely I can navigate across something smaller, like a canvas, if I just use the same ideas. So I started using the, the, the white cane techniques and applying it to um, the painting techniques that I already knew. And then I started painting about 20 years ago and it started really simple. I didn't think anybody would ever want to see a painting of mine. And since then, it's gone to over 120 countries around the world. Um, I've been made a, a cultural ambassador for the United States. I'm working with the Kennedy Center now as a mentor for children all over the country. And, and we just, this is the icing on the cake though. Today, I'm so excited because we get to work with kids kids with disabilities and be able to show them and prove to them that they can do whatever they want. They can be whatever they want. Just because you have a disability, you know, it, it doesn't mean that everything is over. It just means you find a new way to do it. Okay. All right. You just kind of persevered and pushed through. So what, uh, what are some of your techniques when you do this? Um, you know, there, 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 there's lots of different ways to be able to paint without having sight. Um, um, and it, in 2017, I became the world's first blind muralist. And I use a different technique for murals. But today, though, I'm going to show the kids my favorite way because I actually make each color feel different. So every every texture will feel different. So like um, every color, sorry. I, I think I think of colors and textures being the same thing now. But like white, I can make it feel like toothpaste. So if you feel it and it's like creamy and thick, you know, that's got to be white. Then I'll, I'll mix the black so that it feels runny like oil. So if you feel the runny paint, it's got to be black. And then if you want to mix a gray between the two, you just mix for a texture between the two. So that's that's one way that you can tell color through touch. And then when I draw, I draw with lines that I can touch and feel. So instead of using like a pen or a pencil or charcoal that leaves a nice line, but you can't touch it, you can't feel it, um, I use paint that actually it, it's raised up a little bit so you can touch it and you can feel the lines. And if you're a, if you're a blind artist, you know, you're, you're going to use your hands to know where you are and where you've been. If you're a sighted artist, you're going to use your eyes for that. But... You know, if you're visually impaired, you just find a different way of doing it. And the great thing about art is that it's all about what you can do. What you can't do doesn't matter. So if you know, if you want to, if you want to draw something, you want to paint something, you want to make something, you just find a way that works. And it's just communicating. You know, it's just telling a story on the canvas. Wow, that's uh, that's fascinating. I mean, I had never thought of it that way. I've dabbled in painting a little bit, and and really? and I don't know. You know, so I guess when the painting is finished, does it have a lot of texture and ridges and things? It does. You know, when I first started, it was really chunky, and all my paintings were really simple. If you came to my studio in in in, in Denton. Um, you would see 20 years of paintings, and the, the first paintings were very simple, very blocky, geometric, no no color mixing, no shading, no, no none, none of that fun stuff. But over the 20 years, though, I've been able to paint thinner. So I can do paintings now that are very, very thin because I have different techniques. But to be honest, it's more fun to paint thick. So, you know, you get more emotion, more texture, and it's just more fun. So um, so I can paint thin, but now now I like to paint thick. And then yeah. I mix it up. Of course, uh, I guess the dis disadvantage of that is you're running to the art store all the time because you're running out of paint. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I buy in bulk. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> well, that's great. I know that uh, you have, uh, I don't know, 100 students or so kind of waiting on you right now. And I'm really bad about making people wait on me. But <laughs> I think we're going to go ahead and cut this short. Thank you very much. And, um, and I, I really look forward to seeing what it is you can teach the kids. Thank you so much. I can't wait to get started. All right. Well, let's go. All right. <laughs> Time to paint. We'll have more later on KLTV 7 News and KLTV.com.